Well, good morning or afternoon or super late at night, whenever it is that you are getting to the uh, 420 to 51 set for our Corona days. Um, yeah, it should carry us through May, which is when we were maybe going to go back. So hopefully we'll find out within the next couple of weeks if we are going to go back or if uh, we will carry on with uh, the weirdness. I, I hope we I hope we go back. This is I don't like it anyway. So far, what we've been working on, um, we did genetics problems, right? And looked at, you know, just inheritance patterns, rules, family, trees, pedigrees, all that. And then we started looking at gene sequences and how the, those actual alleles are made out of letters. Uh, those letters A, T, C, and G, they make the code and sort of some of the things that some of the processes that go through there. And then we looked at mutations, which is how the, those that code can be changed. Then you saw with the rock pocket mouse that those mutations that change the DNA, those are actually uh, sometimes affecting traits. And then those traits can give you an advantage or sometimes a disadvantage in your environment, depending on how that trait looks. So this unit, we're gonna, we're gonna leap through there. Um, this is a phylogenics little two weaker here. And what we're going to be doing here is uh, looking back at some of those gene sequences and actually uh, tying those to our, our format that we've been using before for alleles. So we're actually going to look at different sequences of genes. We're going to assign them a letter, like a big L, little L, big T, little T, that sort of thing for alleles. So you could actually do genetics problems based on uh, gene sequences. Then we'll have a quick review of how to make a cladogram because it's been a minute. And then we're actually gonna make what's called a phylogenetic tree or sometimes called a phylogenic tree. That's where you use sequences of DNA as your uh, homologous trait, as your evidence for where branches split and when. So to start off, we'll be looking at um, the lactase persistence activity. This one's really cool. Put it up here on the screen share. What I really like about this activity, um, you've got sort of explanation of why it is that we drink milk and like no other mammals do. Turns out, spoiler alert, it's super rare in humans too. And there's a little video that'll sort of go into details on that. It shows some of the mechanism here. It's actually not a mutation in the gene, but upstream of the gene in a switch that controls whether the gene is turned on or off. And then we can look at how that gene has sort of gone out into populations, especially if uh, being able to drink milk through um, adolescence and adulthood would be an advantage or not, if it'd be a worthwhile um, investment for your cells to change things up. And, and really that's just like the fancy way of saying, would this catch on? Would there be a selective advantage? We go through just some uh, pretty straightforward comprehension questions. Then we'll get down here into the table and you actually have two sequences from the switch. Um, they're shown here, you got version A and version B. You got the table and this is just showing, you know, these nucleotides, which is a lot. Again, what I like about HHMI, uh, they're the same people who do the rock pocket mouse. This is actual gene sequences. No, these are not their real names. We use pseudonyms to keep the people protected. But this is actually a real sequence of someone of the genome in humans. So you'll start here. They're all aligned, which you uh, have learned about already by going through the rest of it. They're all lined up, so it's base per base, it's ready to go. Which version lets people drink milk? So you gotta look here, lactose tolerant, those people can drink milk, we call that lactase persistent, or lactose intolerant, that would be um, what most people on the planet actually are. So look through the different versions, they got the maternal and paternal, right, because they actually track these people's families, so you actually see the sequence of DNA, and try to find in there, the first thing I want you to do is, is find the, the section of DNA that is different. So look at these base pairs. They're all lined up. 
find the difference, given the old circle leading. Then pick down here, version A, version B, which one lets you drink the milk? I'll give you a hint, look at who can drink the milk, who cannot drink the milk, what version do they have? Then based on how many of the version that lets them drink milk they have, or don't have, you can determine is this trait dominant or recessive? I'll give you a hint, turning things on versus turning things off. Think about the types of instructions that would be needed to not make something versus make something. If that doesn't help, just look at, look at this. Then after you decided if it's dominant or recessive, then you'll come back up here on the table and you'll use big L, little L, put in their genotypes. Then we got some more questions about John, Hank, Ruby, and then you're gonna do a little Punnett square actions. So we got let's pretend Ruby and John got together and Jan and Hank got together, put their genotypes around the outside, do Punnett square, compare and contrast their offspring here, or you also have more room on the back side for those of you who picked this up at school because this is only a three pager. But don't forget to say what is different and what they have in common when you go through this. That's the lactase persistence activity. After that, you're gonna make a, a fun pedigree, and it shouldn't be too bad. I've got a nice intro video that sort of helps you through that one. And then you'll wrap it all up with a shell sorting activity where you're gonna make a giant phylogenetic tree. That one is pretty good. I know this seems like not a lot of stuff, but uh, these, these packets are designed to take multiple days. So pace yourselves. It, this is two weeks worth of work, I promise you.